those who can do. Those who can't talk about those who can. Now, can you or can you not? No, you just want to sit on the sideline to talk about other people. What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great Taco Tuesday. I, I think we're going to actually have some tacos for dinner tonight. I think I've got I've got some shrimp, and I think I'm going to go get a, a steak over at uh, the grocery store and have some steak and shrimp tacos for dinner tonight because I haven't had tacos in a while. And when you don't have tacos, you get hangry. You get real hangry, and I'm feeling kind of hangry right now. But I have good news. I actually, I have incredible news. You know, we have been in a funk as Cowboy fans because we sit here and we watch all these teams spend all kinds of money. The Dallas Cowboys have spent $11 million, whereas there are teams that have spent $300 million plus in signing their own free agents and getting contracts done and bringing in other people. The Cowboys, you know, we sit here and we say, we suck, man. We don't do jack. And, you know, the Eagles, for one, are always doing a lot of things. Now, I have actually really good news, and I'm not one to be here to defend the uh, Dallas Cowboys front office, but this is actually deja vu for me. Now, see, you know, I, I put in the work. I want you to know I put in the work because while I was on the job site here, it hit me and I wanted to look up my numbers. So here's a, the box from the floor. So we're, we're recycling, we're reusing stuff. But I got my numbers here that actually I did the calculations. I calculated the calculations and everything else. And what I found out is actually pretty, pretty damn good for the Dallas Cowboys. Now here, let me give you an example. The Eagles, you know, Philly 500, silly Philly, has been patting himself on the back about Bryce Hoff, Hoff you know. Oh, my God, we got Bryce Hoff and stuff. Well, I'm going to be real with you. I think that the Eagles are still going to have problems on their defense. You know, losing Fletcher Cox, okay, they still hadn't really replaced Hargrave. And now, of course, Hassan Reddick is gone. You bring in Bryce Hoff. And I'm going to say the Dallas Cowboys replacement will have a better season than Bryce Huff. Okay, so let me go to, let, let's deal with Bryce Huff here before I talk about the replacement that the Cowboys got for Dorrance Armstrong. So this is, of course, bright. So let, let, me, let me try and blow this up a little bit. There we go. So Bryce Huff, okay, had an incredible season last year, okay? He had 10 sacks. 10. 10. 10 sacks. Let's go through the numbers. Combined tackles, he had 29. Solo tackles, he had 19. Assists, he had 10. Tackles for loss, he had 10. Quarterback hits, he had 21. That was great numbers. And 10 sacks. Now, if we go down here a little further, this is, of course, uh, pro football reference. I always like to use that for my statistics and things, so that way it's consistent. If we go down here... To snap counts, he had 480 snaps, okay? 480 snaps, he ended up with 10 snap sacks, okay? So that's, that's, that's good. That's really good. Now, on to the Dallas Cowboys and their issues, okay? The Cowboys, all right, they lost Dorrance Armstrong, okay? Now, here's the thing for all of us fans out here. We're looking and we're saying in our mind, my God, man, we're losing players and we're not going out and signing anybody to replace them. True, we are not going out and paying somebody to replace Dorrance Armstrong. Now, here's what's funny. <laughs> this is literally deja vu to two years ago. Two years ago, Stephen Jones got laughed out the building because the Cowboys had lost Randy Gregory. Randy Gregory, who had like six and a half sacks and, of course, was kind of a menace to uh, opposing quarterbacks as well as uh, ourselves sometimes with some of the penalties. And he ended up signing a $75 million contract to go to the Denver Broncos. In which case, a lot of the talking heads said the Cowboys, they're stupid. They didn't go out. They lost Randy Gregory. They didn't go out with, to get anybody to replace him. And lo and behold, Stephen Jones came out and said, hey, you know, we feel that Dorrance Armstrong, from a production standpoint, is right there 
with Randy Gregory. Now, what you have to say is, Doris Armstrong just signed a $15 million a year deal. I don't think Randy Gregory is signing a $15 million deal with anybody right now. That goes to show you how the roles have changed. Dorrance Armstrong, as we look at the numbers here, after he got out from behind the shadows of Randy Gregory, where he had five sacks, he ended up with eight and a half the year before, seven and a half this year. Okay. So, as Cowboy fans, we see him go to Washington, sign a deal for $15 million. And say, oh my God, man, how are you going to let that guy go, man? He had eight and a half sacks. And here it is, Mark, you're comparing him to uh, Bruce, uh, Bryce Huff, who had 10 last year. Okay. Here's an interesting take here. Let's go back to Bryce. Okay. Here's what's interesting about Bryce is, if I can get come back up. Here's what's interesting. Last year, it's true, he had 10 sacks in 17 games. The year before he played in 14 games, he had three and a half. The year before that, he played in nine games and had two. The year before that, he played 14 games and had two. So is this a case of we've got a great player? Or is this a case of a guy in his fourth season, a contract year, that ended up overperforming to get paid? I'll give you one for uh, like an example that maybe some of you guys might remember, which was, um, oh my God, now, now his name uh, slips my tongue, Jason Hatcher. Jason Hatcher, every year for us, had like three, three and a half, four sacks a season until his last year. That was a contract year with the Cowboys in 2013. He had 11 he ends up getting paid to go to Washington because the Cowboys are like, no, nah, we're, not, we're not replacing that. No, we're not paying him for that. And it ended up being that that defense, which also lost to Marcus Ware, and Sean Lee messed up his knee, went from being the worst in the NFL to 19th. Wow. Wow. Kind of crazy, isn't it? Okay. Now, to the replacement for Dorrance Armstrong. You're going to say I'm crazy, but it's actually Sam Williams. You're like, wait a minute. Sam Williams, uh, hear me out. Hear me out. Okay. Sam Williams last year, four and a half sacks. You're like, yeah, but that's not seven and a half, bro. You're a freaking idiot. You don't know shit, man. That's why you're not on 105.3 The Fan. Because you're an idiot. You're not a journalist. You're not a statistician. You're just a big dumbass. Just staying shit just to say shit. Hold up. Wait a minute. Here's what I want you to understand. Only 28% of the defensive snaps went to Sam Williams. Okay. Which ended up being only 303 snaps. Dorrance Armstrong had 446. You follow me? Dorrance Armstrong had 143 more snaps than Sam Williams. Let's look at the numbers actually head to head. Now keep in mind, keep in mind, look at this. Dorrance Armstrong, 17 games, right? Both played 17 games. Only three sacks less. Only three sacks less than Dorrance Armstrong. Only five solo tackles less than Dorrance Armstrong. Oh, and Sam Williams had a forced fumble that Dorrance Armstrong didn't have. Okay. Let's go down here a little further. When we look at tackles, combined tackles, Dorrance Armstrong had 38 right? Sam Williams had 26. Solo tackles. If Sam Williams had the same amount of, of snaps as Dorrance Armstrong, if he had another, basically a third more, he would have had more solo tackles if he kept that production up. Okay, that's a hypothetical. He would have had more tackles for a loss than Dorrance Armstrong. 
And so this is where you look at it and say, if he gets more time, because Dorrance Armstrong had 49% of the snaps. So from a production standpoint, if, and, and, and this is where we can actually kind of really compare. If we go by the assumption and we go by what Bryce Huff did, where his first year he had two sacks, two sacks, three and a half, and then 10. If we go by the assumption of the more experience you get, the better you get to a point, at a point, it's like a, a hyperbola, a, 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 a pervola, or what, whatever it is, you know, it goes up and comes back down. You will get better to a point until your body starts to break down. So you're going up. If we're under the assumption that with more experience and time in the defense that he will get better than his rookie year and his <coughs> sophomore year, and we look at this <coughs> from the standpoint of in <coughs> Sam Williams' career, he's got 546 total play snaps, okay? which is not too far off from the 446 that Dorrance Armstrong had. So here's the thing. If we take the totality of Sam Williams' career, which is about the amount of snaps that you've had for Dorrance Armstrong, and we go by the assumption, um, you can after we go through the numbers, if you go through the assumption that he will get better with more playing time, then you look at this and say, we're actually in better shape. In those 546 games, eight and a half sacks versus seven and a half. 48 total tackles versus 38 tackles. 30 solo tackles versus 20 for Dorrance Armstrong. 15 tackles for loss versus seven for um, Dorrance Armstrong. 15 quarterback hits versus 12 from Dorrance Armstrong. So you, you follow what I'm saying that basically the amount of snaps – that Sam Williams has had in his two years is about equal to what Dorrance Armstrong had last year. You take those numbers of snaps, the amount of snaps that they had, they're comparable. And so just the fact of Sam Williams being able to have a bigger role, that production of Dorrance Armstrong is going to be replaced in the same way Dorrance Armstrong took Randy Gregory's production and he did a little bit more than randy gregory i think we're going to have the same effect here with sam williams without paying the 15 million dollars now i know it's at that right now with everything that's going on it's hard to defend the joneses okay I, I, it's not what i want to do it's not what i want to do because i'd like for us to go out and get more players now back to sam uh excuse me bryce huff bryce is now having to be the guy as far as edge rushing. See, Sam Williams will have the benefit of having Micah Parsons on the other side, who is a guy who's getting, every year, 12-plus sacks. He is going to get the lion's share, which means Sam Williams, you can't double-team both of them. If that is true, you should see Sam Williams have an easier go than Bryce Huff. It's possible. We shall revisit this after the season and see. Was Mark Holmes right or was he just plain stupid? All right, good people. As always, you know I appreciate you. And I'll see you guys soon. Don't forget, tomorrow, 3.30, we'll be live with Dan Salio, simulcasting on both channels. Peace. Make them